Well, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's an important big time for families right now. It's like we have a love-hate relationship with back to school because we love that our kids can go back in the routine, but then there's this feeling of they're no longer around you and they're they're changing their schedules and they're just facing a whole different a world through and I think, school. Or for a lot of parents too, they walk the line of they don't want to be the overprotective, overbearing parent. They want to be sure that their children are safe without going overboard. Let's talk about some specific examples, starting with monogramming. Yes. Because you say monogramming sometimes parents don't really think about the fact that what your child is wearing on their body or on their backpack yeah. may be an entry point for a stranger to start a conversation with Absolutely. them. Absolutely. And just think about it. So, you know, the idea of a child being abducted by someone they don't know, it's very rare. It's a very rare possibility. But the number one chance when that happens is when a child's walking alone to or from school. So you don't want to add to that, you know, a child's name or anything that can introduce, a stranger could use to introduce a conversation with your child, especially Especially the younger the younger aged kids you know you're seeing early elementary school kids riding their bikes alone and walking to school alone and it's okay but if their backpack says you know Becky and they have a sticker of the school you know or you know a little puppy uh, you know keychain a lot of these kids do that you're you're just giving strangers too much information especially they can say oh hi Becky and you're like oh that's a stranger but they know my name they're not even thinking that their name was on their back exactly right. you know, don't think about exactly that kind of it's and just something the, to think about. isn't one of the old tactics too like a stranger might stop and say hey Becky your mom was in an accident and she asked that you come with me. And we talk about having safe words and we talk about having these conversations with our kids and all of this is just so important. But what we're asking parents to think about is maybe just use initials um, or some other, you know, you can put now pictures, a puppy or anything else, stickers on the backpack sure. instead of their first name or nickname. N nicknames are the worst to me. I'm like, please don't put your child's family nickname on their backpack. Yeah, and talk about social media posts because a lot of parents they want to post that you know you see the first day photos yeah. but there's yeah. a lot of information that a predator can get from a simple photo on your Facebook or Instagram page every single one of us is connected with, with people we don't know online that's just a fact we all are back to school you have all these parents and we're so proud of our kids and they're so cute but you have these posts of them that show what first of all their face what they look like second of all their name you know age they're usually in a uniform, so you see the emblem of the school, you know where they go to school. They're holding up a sign that says, can't wait to start third grade and, and you know, Miss Lindsay's class. Uh, my son loves soccer. You know, you're giving the world basically all the insider information about your child. It's not a smart thing to do. And as much as we love these pictures, send them to the people closest to you, but don't blast them on social media. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a good point. That all the info is right there. Let's talk about bumper stickers because speaking of info, oh, yeah. sometimes you drive down the road and you see these stickers that mm -hmm. talk about student of the month, what school yeah. or even the little family the little illustrations and you can see you know two kids one kid the dog um, it's just something to think about again the car you're driving gives the world an indication of your economic status you're telling people what school your kids go to again people put elementary school middle school high school colleges you know if you have a girl and a boy two girls two boys a dog all of that it's just your license plates right there people have followed other people it's again not about being paranoid but just thinking through the impact information you share with the world about your family. Yeah, it's really just about awareness. You know, we're it not is. here to scare people. No. We know that a lot of people have those bumper stickers and yes. things like that, but yes. it's like if you could just make it a little bit harder for someone to try to target your family or your kids, then that's what we're trying to do. Exactly. I mean, we live in a different world in a different time, and so predators, you know, are there and everywhere, and we just want to protect our kids from them. Rania, you mentioned that while rare, child abductions are most common when a child is walking alone to or from school. So let's say someone out there, a viewer, is in the scenario where their child maybe needs to walk alone. Are, yes. Are there ways to protect that child? So again, if your child, if you're in a situation where your child has to walk to or from school, again, it's okay. But have honest conversations based on where you live, how far their walk is, their maturity level. You know, if you feel like they can't handle... When I just get a watch, I'm sorry. No, no they you're, can't. you're a busy executive. <laughs> yeah. Calls are coming in. They can't handle the conversation. Then you know you need to say I, this is. They're probably not safe for them to walk alone to school. Yeah. But you know, have these conversations. Have safe spots. Where can they stop if they need to stop? Is there a safe home? You know, do they know that they what alternate paths that they can take or they can't take? These are really really important conversations. Again, we're not saying kids can't walk to or from school. Right. And it, and 
general, most people live in wonderful, safe neighborhoods, but you've got to be considerate of things like that. Yeah, and if, God forbid, something were to happen at school and there was some sort of an emergency happening, the family should have a plan in place where, where the kids should go, what that should look like if there's something that happens at school. Listen, I'm a mom of three, and I'm, sm I'm drowning in the back-to-school paperwork, literally. You know, there is so much you have to do to prepare your kids to go back to school. Yeah. The one thing you skim over is the student handbook or the procedures, but don't. Stop and read those. Know what the school's plan is and then have a plan for your family. Talk about what would happen if kids had to evacuate. Who do they call? If, God forbid, they're in an incident, incident and there's you know, a disaster taking place at school, who's going to be the one to call the student? You don't want everyone in the family seeing it on breaking news and calling one student who's right. stuck at school. Have a plan. These are very, very hard conversations to have, but they're important to have. Important to have. Always better to be prepared. Ronnie Mancarius, it's great to see you. Thank yeah. you. Sorry for my new my new smart watch. Oh, no. oh don't worry. We get it. We get it. I don't People know how need to tips. Use I don't know how to use this. No. <laughs> Thanks for I wouldn't to either. Keep us safe. Yeah, we appreciate Thank you. it. Good to see you. All right. For more information about Crime Stoppers of Houston, you can click on the Scene on Houston Life section of HoustonLife.tv. And up next,